Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the channel. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like the material. Watching the World is committed in bringing you the latest news about Jehovah's Witnesses and the war in Ukraine. Yeah, this is Moynich. This is a, a place where they bring you when you've just come from the border. It's, the border is just up there, a crossing called Krakowicz. Uh, we were there and we came down on a bus with uh, uh, dozens and dozens of people who had just arrived from Ukraine uh, into Poland. And, and this is where they are brought. If we just walk around, I can show you this collection here you will see uh, of people holding signs. This is what greets you when you get off the bus are, are, are all of these signs. Now, what they're offering is accommodation. They're offering transport. They're offering journeys to neighboring uh, neighboring towns. Sometimes, actually, some of the big cities. I've seen a sign offering to take people to crack of that. a fair two and a half hour journey. Uh, even Jehovah's Witnesses uh, over there offering, uh, offering support. Uh, and we traveled here, I have to say, with people who ranged in emotions from either jubilant, pleased to get out of their country, or absolutely exhausted, crestfallen, devastated. Uh, I was standing on, on the bus looking at the, this young woman who must have been in her early 20s. I'm not sure I've ever seen somebody look quite so distraught, quite so hollowed uh, and tired. In fact, if we show you here, just as a, another bus, uh, arriving here will move on and they will be greeted, I think, by all of this, this wave uh, of goodwill uh, and attention. Now, a lot of these people who come off will actually have uh, families or support uh, with them, people who have come uh, to greet them. And these are not just Ukrainians. When I was here a, a few moments ago, I was chatting to a, a group of Africans. There were some from Angola, from Nigeria, from Tanzania. They were studying, had been in, in, in Kiev, one in Kharkiv, uh, a couple in uh, Odessa, uh, and had found themselves suddenly caught up in, in this war and looking for uh, a way out and had been met by embassy staff here who will take them away. The following family that we're about to hear from are Jehovah's Witnesses. So Chirnanda spoke with a local Ukrainian family and has more. Hey, Sochi. Hey, Scott. Well, now more than 100 Ukrainians confirmed dead and 74 military facilities destroyed. The Pruchenko family's loved ones are in the middle of a war zone. The Pruchenko family did speak to their relatives this morning to confirm that they're okay. However, those relatives are trying to stay strong as the bombs continue to go off. Because she's breastfeeding and if she will nervous, right, she will lo lose her milk to feed her baby, and it, it makes me so, you know, like, why people supposed to suffer like this? Ukraine under attack. Russia invading the land on all sides. Meanwhile, Stasia Pryschenko's best friend, who's back in Ukraine, is fearful that the deep stress she and everyone else is under will cause her to run out of milk for her baby. Our country suffer a lot, and it's like, it's supposed to be stopped. Stasia and her husband, Genya, were both born, raised, and married in Ukraine. So you enjoyed growing up in Ukraine? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we really, live very good. You know, poor, but, you know. Yeah. The couple remember their lives being marked by good memories. Surround, just surrounded by nature, surrounded by forests, lakes. Those were the good times. So what do you miss most about Ukraine? I miss uh, the people because of how sincere they are how hospitable everyone is. Uh, you build friendships that last for a lifetime. Mm. Something that's not easily found here. But Russian and Ukrainian conflict, boiling over for centuries now, started to get worse after Russians seized an annex Crimea in 2014. When well, Russia first invaded Ukraine, because yes, prior because to that we lived like free people. Yeah. After that, Stasi and Zhenya came to the United States. In our country, I felt free for, for, some, for some time. and I, I didn't want to move from my country. It was the hardest decision in my life. But their families and parents are still in Ukraine. When it's something that happens out there, far away, to people you do not know and do not really care about, 
then it's kind of easy to turn a blind eye on it. Now, when it's happening to your family, to the people you care about, you know, and you love, um, it's close to home. Zhenya's parents are only blocks away from a military facility, now completely destroyed by the bombs. Just one of 74 so far. Photos and videos show tens of thousands of Ukrainians fleeing to safety. Anywhere else, and not where there's bombs going off in the air or helicopters. With their family miles away in the middle of a war zone, the Tri-Cities couple wishes they could do more for their homeland. I can say that I miss my people. I still feel like I'm not belong here, you know. <laughs> Even it's free land of freedom and stuff, yeah. And I'm a US citizen <laughs> now. So, but my point Misplaced is... Misplaced would be a good word to describe it. And they call on all Americans, both Ukrainians and non-Ukrainians, to join the fight to support Ukraine and encourage your representatives to do the same. Mr. Putin, because of their ambitions or their greed, or their desire to rebuild the old Soviet empire. Innocent people, civilians, mm -hmm. suffer in more ways than we can imagine. As they pray for a miracle, they continue to hold tight to the pride in their cultural heritage. Grupo sino a diversas personas que no son parte de su religión. Mientras que en Ucrania las familias se disuelven, en Polonia hay alguien que los espera y los recibe de todo corazón.